Hi there. Right, I'm just going through some of the questions that you've sent me over the last week. Um, and I'm going to start with the one that I'm asked almost every single week, which is, how do I sew in a straight line? Now, I've got a few tips for you, but the main thing is I'm afraid you need to practice. But let's have a look at your sewing machine because your sewing machine can really help you out here. The key thing is when you're sewing, don't look at the needle. The needle's not going anywhere. The needle is going to sew um, wherever the needle sews. It's not going to move. What will move is your fabric. So you need to look at where you're guiding your fabric underneath your needle. Now on the side of your sewing machine, on the throat plate, which is this metal plate here, you have probably got some markings on there, um, either in centimeters or in inches or sometimes in both. That is your your seam allowance. So as you're sewing, let's put the fabric underneath there, put your foot down, and then you can guide your fabric against one of those marks. That's actually quite easy. Take it slowly if you're not too used to sewing. A lot of sewing machines will have a speed control on the front of the machine, so you really can slow that right down. So again, ignore the needle, that's going to do its job. Anyhow, I'm looking at the fabric going across the side of that bar just there. Okay, what if the marking on your throat plate isn't exactly where you want it to be? Maybe you've got a particular wide seam allowance or a particular narrow one or you just don't have the right markings. You can invest in one of these, which is a seam guide and this is magnetic. And this will sit on that plate and you can adjust it to wherever you want that fabric to be. So when you have this in place, you can measure as well if you wanted to put a ruler up against where your needle is and measure to where the seam guide is, that would be a good option for you. And then as you're feeding the fabric through, again, I'm not looking at the needle, I'm looking at this, um, this guide at the side and just feeding the fabric up against there. So that's again a very easy way and a very worthwhile small investment to help you sew in a straight line. Another couple of options, if you haven't got a seam guide and you don't want to invest in one, um, do you have an elastic band? Because you can actually put your elastic band very much in the same way as your seam guide all the way around your extension table or the bed of your sewing machine. Measure this to the point where you want that seam to be and when you're feeding your fabric through the machine, then you're going to use the elastic band as a guide. And this is quite a nice idea as well. Um, if you've got a larger piece of fabric because the band can go all the way around to the front of your extension table here. So you can start guiding your fabric right from this mark right here. Another way of doing this is to use um, post-it notes. So rip off a few so you've got a nice depth to them and put that across the side. Um, or you could even put some masking tape across the side there as well and use that as a guide. So I hope that helps those of you that are still struggling to sew in a straight line. Let's have a look at some more of your questions. Um, skip stitches. Now, if you're sewing along, and when you look at your work afterwards, it looks as though the needle hasn't quite penetrated, so you get a big, long stitch. That's a, a skipped stitch. So the first thing you need to do here is to change your needle. That's probably going to be the main reason why your stitches are skipping. And always make sure that you've got the right needle for the job. I like to keep a little box full of all different kinds of needles. So I've got stretch needles, that's a twin stretch needles. I've got needles for quilting, and these are all different thicknesses of needles. Um, that will take the appropriate thread as well. So if I'm using a quilting needle, I'll use a quilting thread. I do like to use sharps for a lot of the work that I use, but I've also got universal needles. Now, sharp needles are sharp. They are meant for woven fabric. Um, universal needles are sharp, Obviously, they're a needle, but they have a very slightly rounded point. So if you're not sure whether the fabric that you're using is going to be, um, if it's a, a woven fabric or if it's a knitted mm. fabric or if you're just not sure, then go for the universal. So there's my shops, there's my universal, there's my quilting. I also have metallic needles. Metallic needles are for use with metallic thread, which can be very fibrous. These have got a larger hole, um, larger eye, so they accept the, um, the thread and let it pass through a lot easier. I've got top stitch needles. Top stitch needles are for thicker weights of thread. So if I'm top stitching something like jeans, then um, that's the, um, the needle that I'm going to use with a thicker thread. I've also somewhere in here got some denim needles. A denim needle is a strong needle, so if you're sewing through thicker fabrics or lots of thicknesses of fabrics, use your denim needle. 
So back to skip stitches. Change your needle for a new needle, change your thread for the appropriate thread for your project, and that should solve your problem. I think it's recommended you should change your needle after every eight hours of sewing. Don't always do that. Oh, if you do find though, when you're sewing away and you hear bang, 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 that is probably your needle being blunt. So that is an obvious time when you need to change your needle. Or sometimes you can actually see holes in your fabric that the needles pass through when it's blunt and that's another telltale sign. Hello, Bob. Um, breaking thread. Um, if your thread, hello, Bob, hello. If your thread does break as you're sewing, <laughs> come here. Try changing your thread. If your thread is very fibrous, it's probably a cheaper quality of thread. And if you're using a cheap quality of thread in your seams, you're gonna have a weaker seam. So if you're not sure whether your thread is going to be strong enough or not, take a piece of the thread and pull it. And if it snaps easily in your hand, it's going to snap easily in your seam. A quality thread shouldn't be fibrous. It should be very, very smooth. A fibrous thread isn't just weaker than a smooth thread. It can actually help to build up lint inside your sewing machine, which isn't going to do your machine any damage. It just means that you need to clean it out a little bit more often. So go for a more expensive thread. Go for a Gutterman, go for a Metler, go for one of the big names of threads. And that's really going to help you as far as breaking thread is concerned. Um, my thread knots at the start of sewing. Do you know, mine does too sometimes, but I've got a tip for you here as well. Sometimes as you start sewing, your fabric can actually disappear right inside your sewing machine, which is a bit of a devil, and we don't want that to happen really. So, let me see if I can get my machine to do it. If I start right on the edge here and start to sew, it'll probably sew perfectly this time. It's sewn perfectly this time. So, if it doesn't, if you start your stitch line a few stitches in from the edge, hold onto the two threads, top and bottom, and reverse backwards to the edge. And then when you go forwards, the edge of your fabric won't catch and you'll find that you don't have a big knot of thread at the top here. Let me just move this along. If you need to start right on the very edge, again, hold both of your threads. Those go through underneath your foot to the back of the foot. Just start with the needle in the down position. Hold these two threads and then start to sew slowly. And what you're doing here is moving that thread out of the way so it's not having chance to bunch and buckle up underneath there. But as you're starting with the needle in the down position and you're pulling the thread, what you're also doing is lifting the edge of the fabric up so it's not going to disappear inside your feed dogs. And the third answer I have for you is a thread catcher, which is a fancy name for a bit of scrap fabric. Now this time, Put your scrap fabric underneath your needle. Start to sew across the scrap. Just again, move that thread to the back. Then as you come up to your actual fabric, you carry on sewing straight across. So your scrap fabric goes underneath the needle and you're going to sew to the end of the scrap and then feed your fabric straight underneath. And then when you've finished your seam, simply snip off your thread catcher. And again, you've got that nice, neat edge. OK, so that's a quick Q&A for you. If you have any questions, you can either contact me by leaving a comment in the comments box below on YouTube. Um, you can contact me on Twitter, on Instagram and on Facebook if that's easier for you. So all of those details are now going to be on the bottom of your screen or in the details um, that I've written underneath this video. And while you're there, why don't you subscribe? We're going to be doing lots of questions and answers, so click on that red, red subscribe button and you're going to be one of the first people to be notified when a new video appears. I'll see you soon.